Morning, Beville. This is Cindy Clark from PACB TV, and I'm here this morning with Dave Smart in front of the Pagoda Mural out on East Ed Creek Road, which I'm sure many of you have heard about or seen in the Messenger. But we're here with Dave to get the history of this whole beautiful mural, how he got started, and you know why he did this, and the history of the surrounding area that's all a part of all of this. So Dave, thanks very much. I appreciate you joining us here today. Yeah. All right, why don't we just start out right at the beginning. Where did you, how did you get involved in doing any kind of art like this? And yeah. then we'll bring us on up to where we are today. Well, that's, that's, that's definitely an interesting story. I was, I was always, uh, inclined towards art, you know, as a kid and everything. My mom's very artistic. She, she has a photography degree and she's kind of very worldly. She's been around the world and everything like that. And she always kind of tried to promote me towards drawing and stuff like that when I was younger. But, you know, my academic proclivities and everything like that and where I wanted to go with it, I, I kind of went more towards the scientific route. And because uh, uh, my, my dad's an accountant, my mom's artistic. And so I kind of got the best of both worlds with, with both of them. And that kind of guided me in how I'm able to do this now. It wasn't originally what I ever thought I was ever going to do is paint large stuff on the sides of people's buildings, get paid for it, which is awesome. <laughs> but uh, it was uh, you know, it's definitely a journey coming into this. And I've only been doing uh, large scale mirrors for like five years now. Um, you know, I did my first one in a church uh, right in Beeville, and uh, it was after uh, I was rehabbing from a, a coma, and I, I went from going to school in the military to being a doctor to becoming an artist, and, and it was kind of like... Well, that's quite the journey, I guess it yeah. is, I, a, a kind of a roundabout. Yeah. So that was part of your recovery then, I, or your rehab is your art? Yeah, it definitely was. It was definitely where, where I realized, you know, that I, I had an, well, I always knew I had some sort of ability, but I never really touched it. And I thought, oh, you know, I love doing art and everything, but that'll never really amount to anything. I got to do this. I got, you know, I was, I was like a scientific atheist and I was just everything science and you know, I went to RIT for biotech and genetic engineering and stuff, and then I turned into pre-med, pre-vet. It was a little bit of everything. I was going to go to be school to be a veterinarian. It was one of those things, but I never really knew until, like, I, you know, I started picking up a brush and, like, painting on my own. I was like, this feels right, you know. <laughs> well, and then fast forward, here you are to doing this magnificent mural. So how did this come about? How did, I mean, I, I, I give you a lot of credit for, you did like a 180, a complete 180 on your career path. Oh yeah. And this is amazing. Yeah. So now how did we get here? Can you give us some <laughs> history of this whole scenario here? Yeah, I mean, like the, the East Ed Creek, this, this mural has been a part of, well, but definitely been here my entire life. <laughs> it's been here my dad's entire life, my grandfather's entire life. You know, it was uh, painted originally around 1859, um, and uh, the original owner was a uh, merchant marine in China, um, okay. in actually specifically Shanghai. And it was like the classic love story. Westerner goes goes east, falls in love with a girl. Um, they have a baby, but she's part of a family where they had to hide hide the fact that she was pregnant or that they had a relationship or they were in love or anything like that. And, you know, finally you can't hide that for so long. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the family found out about it, uh, the, the, the father had to take the daughter. They were kind of excommunicated out of the, the community in Shang, uh, Shanghai. Um, it was actually near the Longwa Pagoda. That's what this is. And this, this has been here, been there for thousands of years. Um, it's a Tibetan uh, Buddhist uh, monastery almost, and that's what the grounds were. But it was her hometown, it was her home village. So the father had to kind of like flee by the darkness of night, and it's not like they just hopped a plane and ended up here. Right, right. You know, it was like a you know, three month journey, whatever it was to get, get here. Uh, you know, they came through New York City. And, and the actually, the, the, the funny story about this is, is like the history of now, and then kind of coming together and merging. Because uh, when he came to Beeville, he came on the Erie Canal. And the way station was the Beeville Diner. And well, the owners run the Beeville Diner. So <laughs> we're going full, yeah, we're full going, circle here. We're going full circle. And uh, they, actually, my dad's uh, office who's been, that's been in Baldwinsville for, he's been in business for 52 years now. Uh, he's had his. Uh, business on Downer Street, mm -hmm. which is the the street. I know, Jason I know where Deer, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, for uh, since almost I was born, 1980. 
So we got 42 years right there. Um, that specific house was here. I think that house was built in 1844. So all the factors of my family were, were involved here. I mean, all of Beville's roots were here. Um, so when when they came, they came here, they brought, you know, he brought a little Shanghai with him. <laughs> and uh, when he went past my dad's office, uh, it, which is my dad's office now, was a tobacco farm then, um, they were driving a horse-drawn carriage. And I find all these things interesting because, like, me and my dad are involved in horse-drawn carriages. Like, we drive professionally, and uh, we drove amateur for a long time and obstacle courses and stuff like that. And and I just I just picture these pe people on the Erie Canal coming here, coming where the Beaver Diner is, where these guys run it. <laughs> and then... It's amazing. <laughs> ...drive a carriage past my dad's office, which was there in a different state, up to East Dead Creek of all places. How do you get here? I mean, why? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really? People talk about moving from Florida to... Why would you move from Florida? To Syracuse, of all places. Well, why would you move from Shanghai to Syracuse? Um, well, they kind of had to. Yeah. yeah they they kind of had to get really out. Did. So. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so... What happened was, so the little girl really, her name was Nin, and... Uh, now, didn't they live across the street at one point? Okay. Yeah, that right, right there is the original farmhouse, and that's, the perspective was from those steps where that little girl used to sit and cry and miss her homeland all the time, and she used to miss her mom and everything, and the father was like a, a archetypal love story about a father's love for his little daughter, like, what can I do to get her to stop crying, mm. you know? <laughs> Some people drive them, drive their kids around in cars to get them yeah, stuff right. right. He has a huge mural painting. Um, he actually hired somebody to paint this from New York City. Um, I tried to do as much research as possible to find out as much as I could about the original painter. Um, there's not that much history of it back then. Hey, it's actually still that. But <laughs> um, he, he had this painted so that his daughter, who was in a totally foreign land, um, could have something a reminder of home and, it, and, it, and it's, it's a it's a, just a, a beautiful mural back then when I got it there wasn't that much left to it um, but back then he basically painted the scenery of that area so that little girl would sit on those steps look right here and it was meant to give her some comfort some peace of mind reminder of home and this is her form. I wonder if it did I wonder if it, if it, if it helped her that's something we'll probably never know so go ahead. I do actually know that it, it did help because um, Nan actually became established in Beeville, and she ended up living here. Um, oh. And she actually had family, and uh, and one of the family members, one of the descendants who lived there, wrote a national best-selling book about this, about the story. It's a it's a historical fiction, so it's not completely uh, the nonfiction version because there's some stuff that they definitely like had to. Well, they had to spice it yeah, up to make it a, a bestseller. Yeah. Yeah. And she did a good job of it. And uh, she wrote that book, and it was a national bestseller. But so her, her legacy lived on in Beville for a while. And uh, so it did. It, it must have helped. Because, I mean, like, I think we were talking earlier, and when I used to, my dad was in Beville. I, he had a horse farm there. It was legal because he paid taxes in Beville. But, <laughs> so I used to drive drive from Jordan to go to school to Beville, and I used to pass this every day, and I used to just look. I never knew the story. I never did either. I never knew anything about this. I just thought, what in the heck is this thing doing? What does it now? mean? Yeah, what is I it know. What does it all mean? Baldwinsville. I mean, a pagoda in Beville. Yeah. You know, that is so bizarre, but I'm, I, now it's nice. Now when you talk about how it came to be, of course, it makes much more sense. Yeah, and there's there's a lot of, there's a lot of history with it. There's a, there's a lot of cool history um, that I, I got to learn a lot with people that lived on this road for ages, like Ray Rice up the street. And there's people. There's one person that kind of moved here because the pagoda was on the street, and they grew up. It, it actually has kind of like this weird little international cult following, because when I looked it up for the first time, the Shanghai pagoda, the mural from Beville showed up. And I'll have maybe, to check that out. And I, I was like, okay, maybe it's a location and everything like that, but it's probably one of the only country road long while pagodas around. I would, I, would I, I gotta, I can't disagree with that one. I, <laughs> I, I think you're probably right on that. So how did you get involved in doing this then? All right, so here it is. You, you've seen it. You know, you've admired it and wondered why. And how did you, how did you get here to be here today with this? 
Well, you know, at, at first, I felt completely unqualified. <laughs> um, I got called by um, uh, Jim Orlando um, to bid on this. And he's like, do you know about that? And I was like, wow, that one? You know, I had been painting murals. Um, I originally started a business like five years ago, um, especially after knee injury, too. Um, I started a business where I wanted to paint because that's how I kind of rehabilitated from my coma and uh, you know various injuries and stuff that I've had in my life, and I was like, I just want to paint and make, you know, and paint art and do art for the rest of my life because this is what I was supposed to do. I just knew it. And uh, everybody's like, Dave, uh, you can't medically drive. Uh, you can't get to places. Uh, most people don't really think of making money in art in Syracuse, New York. They go to New York City or something like that. But I was like, oh, I'm gonna try it here. So I uh, basically, I got a bunch of business cards and it was just all it was. I never practiced this stuff. I never learned this stuff. I just knew I could do it. And I wanted- You know what, you had no training or anything or? It's just, huh. it's just been something that Amazing. Lay, lay, latent for years. Sure, sure, I had some artistic ability in, in high school, but I didn't really look at it, you know? I was tracing comic books and stuff and I never went anywhere with it. I didn't really have much confidence as a kid, so I couldn't do art because I was always worried about people watching me do it. Like it was, I had a severe anxiety disorder. So it was like, it, it just wouldn't be me, but neither was being a doctor because I had to be in front of people too. Either. So I kind of had to have a lot of things happen in life to bring me to where I am to even be comfortable talking about it in front of a camera or anything else. So um, when... Uh, uh, now Jim, it was a Jim Orlando that first contacted you about doing this, you said? Yes, Okay. And his daughter, Amy, and her husband, Zach, um, they, the Beeville Diner, that's what mm -hmm. Zach, Zach runs that and everything, and Jim Orlando obviously has had a lot of involvement in over that over the years, and, and I, I didn't really know him. I knew of him, and I knew that he was a, you know, uh, a very successful uh, contractor in the area and, and things like that, and um, I was very surprised. I was like, wow, this is cool. This may be the, you know, the good one. And uh, I, had, I had done some other stuff that, the way things happened for me shouldn't have happened the way that they did with an artist with no training or anything like that. I, I mean, I had to build a painting company and painting people's rooms and stuff like that to support my art habit. That's what I always tell people because well. <laughs> I couldn't get uh, art jobs. But I was like, I always wanted to do all of this for a living. And when he called me, it was just about the point where my business was finally switching completely to art. And um, I only have one painting contract left, and it's just this whole community out in Manly. I said I paint their exteriors of their homes, and I do this. Um, so I like did the Smith Building downtown. Uh, I did the lettering matching the historical. So you may have heard me, heard of me from that. What's really funny, the more the God's God incidences and everything that are that are in there is his contractor was a friend of mine that I met year, uh, years before, and we kind of we met. Um, through a work-related thing, and uh, he uh, remembered me, and I remembered him, and uh, he followed my art online, and when Jim and Zach, Zach and Amy came here to restore this, they wanted to restore this property, when they found out it was for sale, they, they did a ton of work in this. They, they restored the barn and the structure inside to really get it back to where it was, uh, so they could preserve this mural. They wanted to preserve this mural. And I was like, wow, <laughs> you know, they, they, and they're calling me to do this? And I'm like, I've never done a restoration on this scale. And, uh, you know, I, I prepped in houses and I, I'm known as more of a, <laughs> a little bit of an OCD painter. So like when I'm, well, yeah, when I'm, when I'm prepping houses, I really prep houses. So when this thing came on, I was looking at it and I was just like, okay, this has been sitting here for 175 years <laughs> and uh, there's nothing left. I have uh, one guy, a uh, mentor named Ninandre Bogue, and he's in Buffalo. And he's a classically trained uh, Italian, uh, basically, he's a master artist. And we just connected over online and stuff, and you know, he, he, I think we have, he said once that we had the same skill set. And I was like, but I didn't go to school. And, and that was kind of the fascination between both of us. I'm fascinated with his art, and I think he's just there in this kid <laughs> you know and I, that's something I, I found out more and more and this job in particular I had a lot of confidence issues I was like well they really hired me for it and I asked Nin I was like what I don't even know what to charge for this I don't even know what to 
to to do it for it. And he, you know, he gave me a price, and I was like, I don't know about that. I was like, <laughs> I was like, maybe maybe where you live, <laughs> and uh, you know, and you know, with your 50 years of experience in classic, I I can't do that. So, but I wanted to do it. There was something inside me that just said I knew I could do it, and um, not like cocky or anything like that. But as I they accepted, and uh, a year went by before I painted it. Um, and I think they were, they were getting stuff ready in the barn, fixing the back of it, preparing it for, you know, to stay up after I built it or painted it. So I had a little bit of lag time. I had other art projects going on. I really learned how to really burn yourself out by doing three art projects at the same oh. time. So I had bad business decisions where I tried to do everything at once and please everybody and it failed miserably. So, but luckily I finally got to talk to everybody. I was like, I'm gonna do everybody one at a time, please wait for me. And my customers are awesome and they did. Um, and so I did them in order, and this was the next one that I did. So now, how long has? When did you start this? June. This past June? Yeah, I believe it was June or or, or late May. But I really didn't even start painting until after. God, well, definitely not after July. It was after July Fourth, at least, because that was when I was doing the priming, uh, the patriotic priming that I did, where people in Baldensville thought I was covering the mural. <laughs> they probably were getting all nervous. Oh, they were. Yeah. I, I, this mural is yeah. a very loved, loved thing. So I had a, like a big thing ahead of me. And uh, I just did a lot of research on it. Now, was all of this part of the original? You just kind of followed. Could you follow like a an outline, a, a faded outline? Yeah. Now, that was the cool part. Um, it really, it, it, there are pictures of, of, of the state that I got it in. And it was basically, it looks like this with little white wisps of paint. It was just, there was nothing there. Oh, okay. It was really, oh. you could kind of see the outline, but there was really nothing left. But when I got, when I got closer to this, I realized that in some places where it was still visible, the original artist had, I, I can actually show you one right here. There's a, uh, I probably filled it in with paint though. But I saw these archways, I remember that. And they were carved in. So the original artist, what he did, some people do a grid and they paint stuff on the chalk first when they do a large mural for mm -hmm. proportions and stuff. Um, he, he etched it so you would never lose his outline. Oh, very clever. It, it was. Or it sounds clever. Yeah. yeah. So this is, to a degree, exactly the same as that. Now, however, Zach and Amy, um, when they hired me, um, they gave me a lot of artistic license, which I was amazed with, which when, when I hear artistic license, I'm like, oh, freedom, yeah. you know? And uh, and it's nice because they feel somebody has some trust and confidence in you. And they said, we just want to preserve the pagoda. We, we want this to be the most prominent thing, to preserve the story, to preserve the history of this. And uh, so I, I was really allowed to, what I wanted to do is preserve that story. So I found that there was a water line in the background. Um, when I first came here, there was a big rooftop right here. And this is the funny story. There's a big rooftop right here. And I thought, and it was in front of the pagoda. And I thought, why in the heck would an artist put something that, uh, like that right in the foreground, like covering up the front? Because you couldn't see the front because it was all faded and gone. But it was this huge roof structure, okay? so. I couldn't figure out why they would do that because it would take away from the, from the whole. Pagoda. So, and then I realized, oh wait a second, I'm not seeing the rest of the house because this is Zach and Amy because they had to for drainage issues and stuff like that build up the skirt. Okay. Of, of, okay. The Makes sense. Make, you know, strengthen the foundation of the barn, keep the rain away from it, so the house would have been down there. However, still it didn't make sense to me. <laughs> so I'm looking at the pictures from the 1860s. There's one picture with a whole bunch of horse-drawn carriages and Nin is actually sitting in one of the carriages, uh, the little girl. And she's, she's all dialed up in like the 1800s regalia. But again, you can't see the bottom of this mural. It's just not there because the carriages are in front of it. Or so I thought. And I kept looking at it. I was like, oh wow, I do see that outline of, of a house right here. But then I looked closer, and there was a guy sitting on a carriage. Well, it looked like he was sitting on a carriage, right about here, a horse-drawn carriage. And I looked closer. He's actually behind the carriage right here on a horse that had the exact same outline as the house. So when they were looking at it, they couldn't see that. Oh, they, okay. They, so okay. they actually painted the outline of a horse uh, when they did the restoration uh -huh. Uh -huh. because they didn't know it was there either. 
Now, I had been ta talking wrongly to people for a little while because when they, in the 1970s restoration, they had four windows here. They had two on this side, two on this side. There was not a door. And I had looked up the historical Longwell Pagoda and there was no windows like these. They're almost modern windows. They were curved at the top and they had, uh, they just, it just looked not right. The, the original one in Longwa has octagon shaped windows like this, weird okay. little shapes. These are actually not windows. Uh, they're shelves where they put like uh, sacrifice flowers, stuff like that. Um, and uh, it just, it, that stuff wasn't there. So I was like, I'm gonna put the original door in that was there that she would have remembered. And uh, so I've, I've looked at some of the photographs and either the 1970s restoration or the 19, 1958 restoration, they also, I, I found that I was speaking wrong to people because I thought that the first restoration didn't have that window theme either. I thought that was something that the later restorations did. So I'm assuming from that knowledge that the person didn't have a direct knowledge, was not somebody from Shanghai or something like that, who would have known that those windows wouldn't have been there, would have had those octagonal shapes. So, so nobody, so they kind of missed the mark from the beginning on replicating it for this little girl. She probably knew more than they did what was really there. So I found that out and I was like, well, no, I'm still gonna go over the doorway. Cause Zach and Amy gave me the license. They're like, do what you think. We, try, we, we have confidence in you, which was awesome to, to hear and feel as an artist. Um, and that was my goal. I wanted to match the original landscape. And there is a gatehouse. There was a gatehouse at that time. So I went back to photographs uh, from 1911. And then I found some from 1870s that were close to around the time that when Nin was there. And there's just a lot of open landscape. There's little villages with these houses and huts where the monks live. Um, that, that over there is probably where the monastery is. I still have a couple more things that I'm going to add in that people can come and see later. <laughs> but you're basically done with this. This is, I'm what's like, your percentage here? I would say, after going up and down really quick, 94 <laughs> percent 94 not 93 or 95 yeah, yeah. 94 my dad's a numbers guy so I uh, yeah there you go <laughs> my time management isn't good but i know my numbers so I, I just have a little detailing in the water to still do um i pretty much matched the historical and like i said there, there was an outline so his fence posts were on my fence posts the one thing that i did though is i widened it a little bit Okay. And the the original was wider than how it would have been portrayed on here. And the original, here's another thing, this thing was tipped. And it's always been tipped. Like, I kept looking at it and going, oh, the barn must have, the barn must have shifted and everything like that. Then I started looking at the pictures from Longwa. It's like the Leaning Tower of Shanghai. It's, it's, it's actually got a pitch to it, so it actually was a real one, and I'm trying to tell her, I think the whole structure must have moved. And it, was, it was more simple <laughs> if the it, guy actually... It was just a simple thing. It was. Yeah. It, that's what it was. Well, I'll tell you, it's very impressive. Now, when you're done, are you going to have some type of a celebration or... Oh, actually, this is kind of like melancholy sadness. Like, to, to like. Yeah, what uh, am I gonna do with my time now? I really loved coming here, and like, uh, you know, it, it was like my most peaceful place to be. It you is know? very, very peaceful, very quiet. I've always no loved that no place. disturbances. No, well, I, I mean, but nice. a lot of people stop by though, you know. And I got to hear the history of the, you know, Ernest Hemingway coming here at times, and like, there's times that he probably would stayed right here in this house. Um, because he came back with the Monroe family that was one of the owners at one time. So there was a picture of Ernest Hemingway in the house and one of the neighbors goes, she goes, oh, that's, uh, that's Ernie. And he's like, Ernie? <laughs> 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 so there's always been a Central New York link to that. And, and I thought that was cool, the nostalgia of it. But the whole idea of like the home thing really, really hit it's amazing. Me. And uh, I've, I've tried to restore it to what the original guy would have. I, is mine a little bit more... <laughs> Uh, colorful in some spots yeah I would probably assume that well, I don't think anybody would would notice really I mean it's just you got to have some color to be able to see it to bring it out and it, you're feeling it so what you're feeling you're putting yeah. you're putting on there and I felt a lot during this one. I like, bet you did. I, I bet you immersed yourself people, into people it. People cried with me. I, I cried with like three people that came and told me their stories. I told me and told them my story, and they were like, oh, you know, and they come by and they they honk every day. And so it's, it's yeah, it's gonna be kind of sad to go, but I, 
I'm glad to know that the way I did it, I, I, I sanded it down like over three quarters of an inch on each side. So it's already 3D before I painted it. So like this, if you feel this area, it's a lot more raised than when you come over here. Oh like yeah. Smooth. And like I took off a ton and I just did it to make that pop. So when I, when I do the final outline, this looks 3D already, it's going to really look 3D. Well, this is good. Do you have to put anything over it? Like yes. a final type color or clear coat or something like that? Yeah, that was my whole goal is to make this thing, you know, it's it's fire retardant. It's going to, it's 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 everything. I, I varnished it three times with oil, with oil, with oil varnish first for my primer coats. Um, and then uh, I even etched out some of the sides too to, to raise it more but I made sure that everything's covered and then I'll, after everything's completely done in the next couple of days I keep saying more and more because um, I want to add more and more detail because I love it so much but I have to let it bake for like a, a couple of weeks and just be in the elements be exposed everything like that um, bleed out just check and look at it again and then I will cover it with uh, probably Modern Masters uh, mural uh, varnish it's like $110 a gallon. It's got UV protection and everything like that. And the condition of it in, in anything, it's not just gonna, I'm just gonna throw on a couple coats and it's just gonna stay there for 200 years. You know, it, it'll stay there, but it it has to be maintained, so. Okay, uh, with that with clear coat coats. with it, okay. All right. Yeah. So how long do they kind of guarantee that for? Well, or I guaranteed it for my lifetime because I'll always come back and throw another coat That's on. That's right. <laughs> 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 but, um, I, I, I think there, there is, they always say like 20 to 30 years, but I'm a painter. I've very rarely seen that much paint ever last that long in Syracuse, New York. Right. Um, so, you know, it, I think as long as there's a maintenance schedule of, 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 you know, putting on another coat between five and 10 years based on what it looks like, okay. I think that this thing can stay another 200 years. So this is kind of your baby. You're gonna take, you're gonna nurture it and take care of it and watch it grow, so to speak. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. I have a relationship with the owners. You got a right a relationship with all of this. Yeah, I do. Yeah, definitely a relationship. <laughs> you can see that. I can see your passion. Yeah, it yeah. was. It, I scared a lot of people, but you know, it's here to stay. And and I just sit back and look at it. And somebody's like, "Do you realize that you did that?" Did I know. I mean, I that's it, when I, mean, I first saw it. I said, "Really? Did this this guy did this and he has no training?" And he just did it from inside, from his heart. I'm. Uh, yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome, and it's what an asset, what history to this area. I'm just so impressed. And thank you so much for yeah, taking welcome. us on your journey, yeah. taking us on the journey of this whole mural. This is a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's it's it brings um, a lot of attention to the area, and it makes little Beeville, our little country Beeville kind of puts us on the map, doesn't it? Yeah. It certainly does. So we look forward to having everybody go by. Everybody go by and take a look at it. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. <laughs> but anyways, thanks again, Dave. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.